What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jason here from JTV Life. I'd like to give a special shout out to all my new subscribers. We just cracked the 100 mark, and that is freaking awesome, man. I'm glad y'all are enjoying the content. Please don't forget to keep those thumbs up coming if you like it, and hit me up. My uh, email is justthinkvast at gmail.com. If you have any content ideas, or reviews or how-tos that you would like to see me do on this channel. Today we're doing a review on the Chins 100 amp hour 12.8 volt smart lithium iron phosphate battery. Now I know that's a mouthful and a lot of people are new to these sealed lead acid or SLA to lithium battery conversions. I did a lot of scouting around the internet. Some of these systems get super complex. If you're anything like me, man, I like to keep it cheap. I like to keep it simple. So this smart battery is pretty much a plug and play replacement to all of your SLAs, uh, your glass absorbent matte batteries, basically any of those old school lead acid batteries, this will drop right in and replace. So what is up with the push to move to a lithium ion phosphate battery from an SLA? Well, there are many. First off, let's talk weight. Most camper trailers, like mine, the battery is on the tongue of the trailer. So just by putting this battery in, I'm gonna free up 40 pounds on my tongue weight. This battery weighs a little over 23 pounds, and my current Group 27 Interstate Deep Charge SLA battery weighs over 60 pounds. So we got a 66% reduction in weight just on that. Next is capacity. This is a 100 amp hour battery. The battery that I currently have on my camper is only 35 amp hours. So we have triple the capacity of amp hours. And also another thing with these lithium ion batteries is the DOD, which stands for depth of discharge. With a traditional seal lead acid battery, you're only supposed to discharge them around 50%. Anything below that, you can get to messing that battery up quick. You go 100% and you might just smoke that battery the first time you discharge it all the way down. Now the lithium iron phosphate batteries, they have 100% DOD depth of discharge. That means you can take this thing from all the way full to all the way empty without destroying it. Now, of course, the manufacturer recommends you only take it to around 80% DOD versus the 100. And they say this thing's good for up to around 5,000 charging cycles. And of course, that comes from the 80% DOD. You take it down 100%, you might only get about 2,000 cycles out of it, but that is still far above the amount of cycles you're gonna get out of a traditional lead acid battery. Another pro that a lithium ion battery has is the voltage is much more stable. You're not gonna get that voltage drop off as the battery discharges and gets low. It stays within a really close range, whether it's at 2% or 100%. So that means your more sensitive electronic devices won't be affected, your lights won't be dimming, your bathroom fan won't be slowing down as this thing is spinning at the drain. Another great thing about these lithium ion batteries is they don't off gas. Traditional lead acid batteries, they release gases that are not healthy for you. So you have to mount them outside. Now this particular battery, you could mount it inside if you want. And I did kick around the idea of moving it inside underneath one of my benches and my dinette, but I kind of decided not to. And we'll get to that a little bit later when we talk about some of the negative stuff. So speaking of negative stuff, what are some of the negatives? There's gotta be a hitch. These are so much better than SLAs. What makes them a tough decision to get into? Well, the first thing is gonna be the price. Now that battery that's currently in my camper right now goes from anywhere between $89 on Amazon to 123 at my local Walmart. This battery is a $650 battery. So it is quite, the investment to make. I totally understand that. But when you got a baby in a camper and the heater's not working just because the fan won't blow because your old crappy battery stopped working, do that a few nights, you're gonna be buying this battery. Also, this battery could be used for things other than campers. It could be used in a marine application, which then also the weight 
is gonna be like super advantageous for you. You can put it in just a simple little off-grid application where you got a couple panels, maybe charge in a heater for a chicken coop, something like that. Or if you're building yourself a van, this is another really good option because you can put it inside. You don't have to worry about it off gassing and you can mount it in just about every position except for upside down. So you got a lot of uh, spread in the applications in which you can tailor this thing to work for you. Another thing that can make these a bigger leap to get into is the type of hardware and different things associated with having one of these run right. And this is kind of where the smart battery takes care of all that for you. And the premium of this smart battery over its counterpart that's not smart, I guess it's stupid, it's only about 150 bucks more. And you would spend that or a little bit more buying all the individual components you would need to offer the reliance, convenience, and just ease of use that this integrated system has. Another thing to keep in mind when you're designing your system with lithium ion batteries is they don't like to charge if they're too cold or too hot. Same thing with discharging. An awesome thing that the smart battery has is it has a built-in heater. Now this is an item you can add separately and it can be controlled by your exterior BMS system, whichever one you pick out. If you don't go smart battery, but this particular one, it can charge from negative 31 Fahrenheit up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it can discharge from negative four Fahrenheit up to 140 Fahrenheit. Of course, if it's below its charging parameters, that heater will kick on and it'll bring it up to temperature. And then the BMS will allow the charging current to come through and charge up your battery. So that's why here in Northern California, it doesn't really get crazy snowy. It doesn't really get deserty hot too much, even though we travel into those locations. But I don't think mountain this outside is gonna be much of an issue for me. So if you're getting into an upgrade and you only have one or two batteries, I highly recommend just going with the smart battery. That way you don't have to go rigging up a BMS and another system that monitors your charge level between your cells and all that. If you want to do a monitor, you got to get a thing called a, a shunt, which is a little hardware device that you wire on the negative terminal of your battery system. And then you got to wire another wire over to a monitor and that'll let you know what your SOC or state of charge is for your battery. That way you can make sure you're not over discharging it or overcharging it. All of that is done here. You don't have to go cut no holes in your camper to put a monitor up. You simply download their app. And as long as you're within five to 10 meters of it, you can monitor all of the battery's parameters right on your phone, which is super, super cool. The BMS is definitely a must have because the way these batteries are constructed is there's actually four individual 3.2 volt cells within here that are all wired together in series to give you your 12.8. So that battery management system is gonna make sure that these cells are charging evenly because what happens with lithium ion batteries and what can kind of get them in a, a funky spot is if they discharge at different rates or charge at different rates so something that the manufacturer recommends every three months is to do a thing that they call bottom balancing which means you pretty much take it all the way down to zero charge left and then you bring it all the way up to 100 percent charge and that built-in battery monitor and the BMS is gonna help you do that without any added hardware or accessories. This particular one can be run in series up to four, parallel up to 10 different batteries. Another thing that you're gonna have to do if you make the leap from sealed lead acid batteries to lithium ion batteries is you're gonna have to put a different charger converter. If you've never really fiddled with one of these on a boat or an RV, what your charger converter does is it receives AC alternating current from either your generator or your shore tie, and then it converts it into DC direct current power that powers your DC bus that goes to your lights, USB outlets, anything that runs on direct current. And then it also goes down to your battery and charges it. So a lithium ion battery and a SLA battery, they have different charging profiles. So you wanna get a charger converter combo that is tailored specifically for lithium ion batteries. 
The other thing is you want to make sure that it is the right amperage because the amperage is going to kind of affect your rate of charge on your battery. Some batteries can handle more, some can handle less. My SLA battery in my camper with the original charger converter is a 20 amp charger converter and it kind of takes it a while to charge. For my charger converter, I ended up going with the Progressive Dynamics 45 amp charger. Um, the max charge that was on the Amazon ad was 50 amps with the standard charging being 20 amps. However, once I busted out the manual that came with it, it said 100 amps. Now I did read through a bunch of the questions that people asked on the Amazon sales page and they are very responsive over at Chins. Like their customer service seems like it's pretty top notch for something that comes out of China. Probably just a bunch of Americans over there slanging these batteries on the low, low, making that dough. But hey, you know what? Good for them. One of the questions, someone asked what the recommended charge is and someone responded back and said 45 amps. So that's why I went with the 45 amp model. So when you are shopping new converter chargers, the amperage will also dictate how fast your battery charges. A real basic equation for this is take your battery's capacity in amp hours, divide it by the amps that the charger is, and roughly that's how long it will take to charge up your battery. So if I went to a 0% state of charge on this, meaning it's 100% discharge, I need to charge it all the way from the beginning, I would take 100 divided by 45, and that'd give me about two hours and 20 minutes to fully charge this battery. That's pretty impressive. If I went down to just uh, the 80% uh, discharge on it, so I only had 20% state of charge and I had to put 80% back in it, that would only take me about an hour and 45 minutes. So if you're just hopping on the Jenny real quick or get a quick little charge up wherever you're at, you can charge this battery up really quickly and still be able to power your fans, heater, refrigerator, anything that runs on just that really low voltage in your camper. So as far as this battery goes, it came packed really, really nice. It had a really thick papered, informative brochure that came with it. They included a uh, SDS, if you know what that is. It's like a, it's just a, a sheet that has all the different information about first aid, fire hazards, basically everything you need to know about handling and maintaining this in a safe manner. They definitely have their stuff together there over at Chins. It ships straight from China and it gets here in under two weeks, which kind of blew my mind. I ordered it thinking it was going to take about a month to get here. And then it showed up early and it's just been sitting in my basement for about two weeks. But I finally got a chance to put this video together. Next video, we're going to be installing this in my camper along with the new charger converter. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Hit that notification bell. That way you can find out when that video comes out. I plan on doing a lot more RV power videos in the near future. Another one, I'm going to be hardwiring my generator into the power grid of my camper using an automatic relay that's going to simultaneously take feeds from the shore power and the generator and switch between them automatically with the preference on the generator. That way you can jump on and off the generator and the shore tie without disturbing the AC or anything else. And I can just let my generator run as I'm towing down the highway in the desert and that AC can blast. So when we pull over for a sandwich, it's not 105 degrees in there. As far as warranties goes, they got a great warranty on this thing. If anything happens to it within 90 days, they just straight up send you another one. If anything happens to it within three years, they help you diagnose it. And if it is indeed failed, they send you another one. And then that three to 10 year mark, if anything happens, it looks like it's some sort of like pro rated type thing, but they definitely stand behind their product with a 10 year warranty. I don't think you're gonna get an SLA to last that long. Our camper is only a year old and our battery is smoked. So I really hope that this is the last battery that I buy for this camper. Thank you very much for coming by guys. I had to move down into my studio because my neighbor's just going ham with the leaf blower out there. But if you are new, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing and it really helps me out. Also hit that like button too. This is good for the YouTube algorithms. 
and discovery so that way people just like you can get a hold of these videos and we can all build that community together of tinkers, how tours, people that just like souping up everything that they have. We can all grow and learn together, find the best products and the best methods of getting her done. JTV Live, this is Jason, y'all signing off. I will see y'all next time. Don't forget to hit me up on my email, justthinkvast at gmail.com with any ideas or suggestions. See y'all later. Peace.